Hi guys, this video is a deep dive on the Cretan factions they've added into RTR Imperium Serectum version 0.6. It was taken from a longer interview that you can find down in the description below with Mausolos, one of the historians on the mod, and this one is my favourite. This one is an absolute cracker. Some pearls of wisdom and pearls of information in here. So make sure you like and subscribe, otherwise Mr. Cherry will be very upset with me. But without further ado, enjoy. On to Crete, that is literally Verdansk, or uh, uh, whatever the, the the island map of uh, Call of Duty is called. You can see how long I how long ago I played Call of Duty Warzone, but it is basically Battle Royale Central on Crete right now. Um, so let's start with uh, Kaidonia over here, and uh, yeah. They're on the western yeah. edge of the island. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people may recognize Kedonia because they played a starring role in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Mm. And um, there's also a song about the city by Muse um, in the Knights of Kedonia, even though they later said it was actually referring to um, a crater, I think, on, on, on the Mars or in the Moon, which is named <laughs> after the Cretan city. <laughs> but in any case, it has gained some fame somehow. Um, yeah, I think I was to say some general things about the Cretans, so it's not getting too long for each of them. Mm. Um, there was basically a lot of inter-Cretan warfare in this period. Even though there was a legend among the Greeks of the mainland that the Cretans would actually band together whenever there was a foreign threat, which is where the word syncretic comes from, because it oh, means cool. the Cretans together. Mm. Um, I actually only learned about this today, so it's good <laughs> to have an opportunity to use it immediately. <laughs> yeah. um, but as you can see, we have four factions. Kidonia in the west, um, which is yeah. more than Shania, um, one of the most beautiful towns on Crete and often visited by British tourists as well. Mm. <laughs> you have um, you have um, Gautin, which is the pink faction here, um, further to the east. And the, the city does not exist anymore, but there's an extensive um, well, there are extensive ruins and a very small modern city nearby yeah. where I had excellent undacos last year, a kind of Greek bruschetta. Oh, nice. <laughs> in, the back, in the backyard of a Greek temple, oh, which is quite cool. amazing. Um, and then, of course, you have Knossos, which most people would know about because Minos was there. Yeah. The Minotaurus was in the labyrinth, which is why they have the labyrinth as as the symbol and i think yeah that doesn't need much introduction yeah. um and um of course about other greek cities on on crete like here Putna, which is we gave to the greek city-states on the southeastern coast um yeah that one and itanos in the east was controlled by the ptolemies but yeah. um we have another actual faction here which is lutos and or lictos yeah and there's two versions basically and which has become quite famous in Germany because um, I think it's is it Aldi um, yeah Aldi they are they are selling their products under the Litos brand oh, and okay. I think it's also available in the countries I don't know if you've seen that before there's a picture where it's in English um, <laughs> yeah, yeah I look, I look, um, they have very good Greek sorry go on. products under the Litos <laughs> they have a load of Greek products named Litos oh cool <laughs> yeah, I, are yeah, they yeah, is this yeah. the is this their brand as well yeah the pig <laughs> yeah yeah probably not. <laughs> yeah. no the, the boar is also from, from the coins of Litos. yeah, yeah no yeah. it's cool i, I love the boar it's one of my favorite ones yeah oh yeah it. this, is, this is great so we have intense um warfare on this yeah. on this island in third and second century bc especially in the third century bc we have uh, um various major wars i think i'll keep it short now and only quickly speak about the Lydian War, because um, the Lydians, which we just spoke about, um, they found themselves in a bit of, of a bit of an, um, problematic situation towards the end of the century in the 220s, because Knossos and Gortin, the, big, the two big neighbors who were usually rivals and hated each other, they had somewhat <laughs> come to, what do you call it, an, um, yeah, an agreement, and now, um, found themselves in a in a leak, which uh, aimed at destroying Lutos. And um, the Lutians, who wanted to strike preemptively, left their city. And while they were away, the Knossians found the city, 
no one was there and they burned it down <laughs> and if you go to Heraklion which is which is modern day Knossos basically you yeah. will find the ashes of Lutos <laughs> wow. which archaeologists have actually found from that day in the museum which is quite quite impressive yeah wow. and um the Knossians and Knossians um they went on to lose the war, however, um, and the, the ruins of Lutos are perched on a hilltop, which I also saw last year, which, yeah, but unfortunately it was not accessible to the public at the time. Mm. Um, the Lutians, however, they had survived because they had been away. Uh, only their city was physically destroyed. Uh, one of the allies gave them um, asylum, basically, and they later rebuilt the city. And in the meantime, they called for help to an ally on the mainland and the Gnossians had um, activated our dear Aetolians as allies, which seemed like a good idea in the first place, but that made the Lutians call on Macedon. <laughs> <laughs> and of course the Macedonians were a bit more powerful than our dear Aetolians and yeah. the troops they sent, including several hundred Lurian mercenaries, Achaean archers, I think, and other troops, they would eventually turn the tide and the Lutians would actually win the war. Knossos was, of course, not happy with this outcome. And the wars would go on between differing alliances, especially between the big three in the middle, Litos, um, yeah. Knossos, and Cortine, but also with um, Kidonia, Hereaputna, Itanos, and the other cities on the island, until the Romans would arrive in um, 70 BC, and the father of, I think, Mark Antony invaded the island, uh, mm. or tried to invade the island, but while landing his troops, he was... Um, ambushed by a Cretan fleet and utterly defeated, oh, which wow. was said to be one of the reasons why Mark Antony became such an ambitious man, because everyone in Rome laughed about his father, oh. whose ass was kicked by the so-called Cretan pirate. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, however, three years later, there was a more, much more um, substantial Roman campaign in Crete with over four legions involved, and they would eventually conquer the island, though there would still be bandits in the mountains, and there would still be some yeah sorts of piracy and all the Cretans would fight on of course but yeah you can see why all these factions are there because they kept fighting against each yeah. other and each of the cities has something special to go for them um yeah also yeah, because cool. some of them were aristocracies aristocracies i mean three of them are the lithians are the only democracy oh, which cool. also makes them a favorite victim or the Knossians and the Gratinians, but yeah, the three in the middle, especially, they, they just <laughs> hated each other to the bone. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like Crete now is kind of like a snapshot of Greece, but just on a smaller scale. It's just big battle yeah, royale yeah. going on between many exactly. different factions, and uh, that's the same that's going to happen on Greece, but just on Crete, it's a smaller scale until someone conquers everything. But if they're going to conquer everything, they still have to kick the Ptolemies off and face the wrath of potentially Alexandria. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a good, cool little uh, campaign if you want to start as one of these guys. Or, if you're going to come to Crete now, like, I'm playing Crete in 0. Uh, I'm invading Crete as the Seleucids in 0.5. Uh, but there's just it's just rebel territories. But now, if you come and invade Crete and one of these people's taking it over, it's going to be such a harder task. And on top of that, they're going to have upgraded all the cities, so you're going to get a more advanced, a more wealthy Crete to come to as well. So I think it's really cool uh, that they've all been yeah, absolutely. added in. Absolutely. And, and I mean, we've already mentioned some of the actors who intervened on the island this period. Yeah. The Macedonians, the Achaeans, the Aetolians. But so did um, the Spartans, so did um, the Rhodians. <laughs> yeah. And the Ptolemies, of course. Um, yeah. And the Romans later on. Pontos. I think under Mithridates also had some ambitions here. So lots of powers actually looked for Crete. And it's very much both on the fringes and at the center of the Mediterranean and Greek world. Yeah. Oh, cool. So in terms of the uh, in terms of the units, uh, the generic units are yeah. Cretan archers, Cretan slingers, Cretan hoplites. Kaidonia gets their own archers. Uh, Knossos gets quite a few units, to be fair. Gets the Nossian, yeah. Nossian Agalai. The Archers, Hoplites, Hippeis, and uh, Hippeis Late Reform Unit as well. Gortin uh, gets the uh, Agalai, Archers, Hoplites, Theroperoi, Hippeis, and Late Hippeis again. And Litos gets the Lithian Agalai, the Lithian Archers, and the Lithian Hetairoi. Um, but in terms of the Agalai, 
what actually are those units and what does Agalai mean in general? Because I think that's a new one for me. I've not really seen that uh, before on any of the units. Yeah, so um, the Cretans are a bit special <laughs> for all, all the Greeks. The, the Cretan um, is the enemy of Cretan and the Cretan always lies. We can already read in, in Homer and he gives a bit of a of a quiz, of a, of, um, of a riddle, because if the Cretan says that the Cretan lies, but the Cretan always lies, does he lie if he says that he lies? Ah, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, and uh, it's just, it's not just, just, just this, but also the constitutions, they are the language, they still used la um, letters like the D gamma, which looks a bit like an F, mm. um, a letter that had fallen out of use in Greece in the 6th or 5th century BC. But in the 3rd century BC, the Cretans still use it. And they are of other archaic traditions. One of them is their own take on the Ephites, which we've seen elsewhere, ah, okay. which is to organize the young men into units called herds. In Cretan Greek, it's, they are called Agelai. Yeah. And um, the whole um, concept behind it is a bit, um, <laughs> bit prehistorical almost. <laughs> so basically, one of the one of the um, ya a young man and is in, uh, usually twenty years old, a son of a nobleman. He would ritually ritually abduct um, a younger son of um, others of other Cretan citizens, um, and then the mates of the younger boy they would defend him. But all of this is just just a game. But of course, it could terribly <laughs> go wrong sometimes. Oh Maybe they would God. kill the richer guy, or he would kill some of the foreign boys. That was not the plan, <laughs> but it could still happen. But it is a test that it did happen. But the idea was that he would ritually kidnap the boy. The mates try his mates try to defend him. He defeats them because he's of course richer and the more prestigious person. And then he kidnaps the guy and um, goes into the forest with him. With him and trains him, uh, trains him how to shoot with a bow so they can hunt. And then the mates of the Pora boy, they join them again. And they basically form a hunting and later warrior community for the rest of the life, where the richer uh, boy, later man, he has become the leader of the pack, so to say, and <laughs> the others have become his companions, those from the Pora strata of society oh my God. so this is basically how the Greek society is bound together and it's all about hunting and warfare yeah and um there's a bit of a hilarious um there's two hilarious notes on this because um and now i have to remember what it was but I was looking for what Cretans actually hunted. I mean, which animal would they hunt? Yeah. And I think it was rather unusual because you think maybe that um, they would hunt, you know, oh, boars. Yeah. Um, but I think it was rather strange. They actually hunted wild goats. Yeah, exactly. They hunted <laughs> goats. <laughs> what the hell? And. This is just getting stranger and stranger. I'm not gonna. I'm sorry if you're yeah, from Crete, yeah, yeah. but this is this is 2,200 years ago. So don't have a go at me for saying that this is slightly slightly weird. But this is just like it's just so different from everything else. It's so interesting. But it, it, it's it's a wild goat, which is actually not the same as uh, the goats we usually know today. Yeah, They're much yeah. bigger, I think. And they used to live um, there, but um, they still live on Crete, actually, which is the only place in Europe where they still live. Oh, cool. That's cool. <laughs> um, and you can see them there in the mountains, but other than that, they are extinct in Europe now. Yeah. But um, they still exist in Crete, and there's a complaint cool. from the 2nd century BC from the holy island of Delos, um, the, mm. the capital of the Delian League and the Athenians, east of Athens, and... <laughs> um, on Delos, the Cretans who, who visited it, and also Cretan mercenary archers who, who were there, they apparently hunted so many wild goats <laughs> that they were, almost went to extinction on Delos. Oh God. And the gods were not happy. <laughs> <laughs> then, they, then Poseidon yeah. came and gave him a storm on the way home because you hunted too many goats. <laughs> yeah. oh, so I think basically, just to sum it up, it's like, um, I think the ancient Cretans they're a bit like, um, I don't know, like a Scottish Highlander to an Englishman from London in the early 20th century or something like that. Yeah. He thought, a representative of, of a lost civilization, basically. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Even for ancient standards. Saul's not going to be happy about that. <laughs>
Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, well, I, I like my, I like Scotland. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I'm it's, it's also cool that they, that that um, they, they, they they keep all these old traditions alive. So yeah, Crete certainly did, and the yeah. Sambots still do today. If you go there, you still find a lot of strange things, which even in other parts of Greece don't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. Do you know what I was thinking about the kidnapping thing? That just sounded so much like Midsummer Night's Dream. I was just like, I wonder, oh, yeah. I wonder whether Shakespeare, like, I know it's Greek based, but like a lot of the stuff in there, like it sounds very, very similar to that sort of stuff. So I wonder whether Shakespeare took a lot of inspiration from Crete for that rather than because it's it's based in Thebes. But yeah, I'm guessing that he, had, he probably took more inspiration from the stuff you were saying there, to be honest. So, uh, but yeah, cool. Um, so I think that's yeah all those units in there we talked about the aglide yeah thank you for having me and thank you guys for watching and guys and girls i should say and everyone um we hope you enjoyed the video and there will be more ras content in the coming weeks on red z's channel <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I can tell you that. and uh, we are building towards the the next release of course of our is 0.6 and as you can see um, we've made great progress with the factions, the units, and the map, which is at this moment being completely finished. So um, there's going to be so much new stuff you won't believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome. So stay tuned, guys. Make sure you do subscribe. Make sure you do like this video if you've appreciated uh, appreciated it, because there might be another couple of videos coming with Miles Loss uh, in the future as well. So. Uh, keep that in mind um and make sure you check out the greek aor units and the uh, and the map showcase if you've not seen the map showcase as well and stay tuned because as i've said already every weekend guys is gonna be a in-depth uh, development update on version 0.6 all the way to release so every weekend you're going to be full of ras content just like this so thank you very much for watching guys thanks once again to the mod team and especially um mausolos so thank you very much uh, for watching guys and i will see you all again on the next video bye bye